Good morning friends. Welcome back to my channel Coding Environment. In today's video, we are going to see what is immutable class in Java. This is one of a very important topic which can be asked in any Java technical interview. So without making any delay, let's see what is immutable classes in Java. So in this video, I am going to cover what is immutable classes, what are the characteristics of an immutable class and how we can create an immutable class. So let's see what is immutable class. So immutable classes means that once an object is created, we cannot change, we cannot change its content. So basically, now suppose if you have a user class and you're creating the object of that user class. Now this is suppose you can, you can assume that this is the object and it has a field called suppose roll number. So once you set this value at suppose one, we cannot change this value from one to two. So this represents a immutable class. It means its content cannot be changed. In Java, all the wrapper classes like integer, boolean, byte and sort and a string classes is immutable. So these are the examples which you can say in any interview, like what are the default immutable classes in Java? So this integer, boolean, byte, sort and a string class is immutable in Java. What are the characteristics of a immutable classes? Sorry, I've written immutable. What is the characteristics of a immutable classes? So the first characteristics of an immutable class is that class should be final. So why the class should be final? The class should be final so that no other class can extend this class. So if the class is final, no child class can extend this class. That's why it should be final. Also, the data members in the class must be declared as private. If it is declared as public, any object can access its data member directly by using the dot and then go and change the value. That's why we are making the data member as a private. Also, the third characteristics of the immutable classes is data member in the class must be declared as final. So once that ob so once that data member is set to some value, we should not be able to change that value. That's why the data member must be declared as final. Also, what we should provide as a fourth characteristics of the immutable class is one parameterized constructor where we are going to initialize all its data member by performing a deep copy. So this one is a very important characteristics which we have to keep in mind. I will explain this deep copy part in the code in detail. Also, we should not provide any setter method for all these data members. So there should be no setter method for the data members and the getter method should perform the deep copy and return the objects. So this, this I will explain in detail while going through the code. These things are very simple. So you can see we have basically six characteristics of the immutable class. Now let's go into the code and see how these things can create a immutable class. So moving to the Eclipse. So for the sake of the time, I have already written the class and I'm going to explain this class by using those six characteristics. So let's go one by one and see those characteristics and try to find those characteristics in this class. So if you see this, the first thing is the class must be declared as final. So you can see here, this class user is declared as final. So this is the first characteristics which I was going through in the PPT. The second one is all the data member of this class should be final. So you can see it has three data members, name, register number and the metadata. And you can see all these data members are declared as final. The third one was like, if you see the third one, or sorry, the second one was it's all the data members should be private. So you can see here it is private and the third one was a final. So it is also final. So all its data member should be private and final, which is the second and third point. The fourth point was there should be a parameterized constructor to initialize all its field. So you can see here it has a parameterized constructor where it is getting all its input which is used to initialize its 
data members. So you can see here, it is taking name as an input, it is taking register number as an input, and it is taking metadata as an input. And all these inputs is used to initialize these fields. If you see, there is one thing which I was saying that it should perform the deep copy. So these things don't require any deep copy part. If you see the name and register number, it is not requiring any deep copy. But if you are not doing the deep copy of this math and you're going to just assign this metadata to this metadata, it will refer to this metadata. And if someone going to change this metadata, the field will also be changed. So to avoid this, we are going with this deep copy mechanism. So how we are going to do this deep copy? What we are doing here is creating a new object and then copying one one field from this map to this temp map and assigning this temp map to this metadata. So this is the way we are doing the deep copy, right? We will pick one field from one map and then add that field into the other map instead of just assigning the map reference to the metadata map reference. So we are creating here a new temp map, then traversing that map using the for loop, taking one one entry from that metadata map and adding into this temp map and assigning this temp map to this metadata. So you can see this part is basically doing the deep copy. And if you're doing the deep copy, you'll see what is the benefit we are going to get by performing this deep copy. The other things was we should we should not provide any setter method. So you can see here in this class user, there is no set setter method for these data fields. So you can see here only get name, get register number, and then get metadata. Also, this get metadata is providing you the value by using the deep copy here. Just like here, what we are doing is like creating a temp map and then taking one one value from the map and filling this map and assigning this map here, right? So this was the deep copy part. Similarly, in the get method for this map also, that get metadata map, what we are doing here is creating a temp map, then taking one one value from this metadata and filling this temp map and then returning this temp map. So you can see here, this part is the deep copy of this getter method. So you can see here, in this user class, what we have done is, incorporated all the characteristics of this immutable class. You can see here. Now, let's test this immutable class. Now, suppose I have a test driver class here and I'm trying to create an object of this user. So, what I have done here, I've created a user. So, what I've done here, I've created an object S of the user class. Now, the user class was expecting what? One name which is ABC, one roll number, which is 101, and one map. So what we have done, we have created a map here and filled some value into this map. You can see here, I have filled one, two, and first and second, like this is the key and this is the value. This is the key and this is the value. So we have created a map, and now we are going to create an object and initializing those data members of that object using this parameterized constructor. Now, once you do that, what is going to happen? It will create an object S and in that you can set all this value, right? And then if you're printing these values, we should get name as a ABC, roll num register number as a 101, and that map value as a 1, 2, and first second. So let's run this program and see what output we are going to get. So see here, the name is coming as a ABC, the register number is coming as a 102, and the map value is coming as key as one, first and second. So here key is one, the value is first, key is two, and the value is second. Now let's try to change some value of this already created object. So if you're trying to change the value like this, you'll get an error. Why? Because the registered number of this user S is not public. If you see here, if you go to this user, this registered number is private, so we cannot access it directly. So this way we cannot change it, you will get a compilation error only. Now suppose if we're trying to change this map value. Now let's try to change this map value which was used to initialize this user uh, metadata. Now if we're trying to change this map.put3,3 and run this, 
what the output we are expecting according to this user which is a immutable class there should be no entry for this third uh, parameter right because this this particular class is immutable and once it is initialized we should not be able to change the value so let's see if we are able to change the value or not now I'm running this as a Java application and you see here its value is not changed right this was the part till here this is these three are like a uh, system these three prints and this print is basically this one where we are printing the metadata only now you can see this value is not changed now suppose again if you're trying to get the value using the getter and change its value let's see if we are able to do it or not so what we are doing here we are we are first getting that metadata using the getter and then trying to change that value so let's see if we are able to do it or not no right because this map which was used to initialize the user uh, data members is using the deep copy while initialization and also while the getter method if you're not doing this as a deep copy and just initializing the reference it is going to change the value so let me show that part also so now suppose instead of doing this as a for loop and just assign this metadata to here and then run this code see here it's changed right because you didn't do the deep copy while initializing this user class so this was the uh, benefit which we are going to get using the deep copy so this is all about your immutable classes in java uh, hope you like this video if you have any doubt please write it in comment section if you liked my video, please subscribe to my channel and stay connected. Till then, have a great day and goodbye.